Stayallday.com. We're now tuned in to the show. <clears throat> Where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there, boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work on Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is business principles for working in the creator economy. For those of you who know what that means, as far as creator economy, I'll explain it momentarily. But before I do, I remind you of two things. First of all, my daily motivation and Monday motivation text messages. Guaranteed to have you focused, sharp, and on point to start your day or your week respectively. All you got to do to get them is be a member of my texting community, and it's free to join. So. Excuse me. All you have to do right now is send a text to the following number, 305-384-6894. And once we start sending those messages again, you'll be getting those straight to your phone. Secondly, work on your game, university. You want to work with me directly. Have me as your direct coach. Be able to join our uh, community of high performers and high achievers. Be able to ask me questions and get direct answers to your questions and get access to all of our trainings, all of our courses, all my tactical and strategic trainings around mindset, business, and everything in between when it comes to your personal and professional life. Go to work on your game university.com to see everything you need to see to get started with us right now. Uh, with that out the way, let's get into the topic here today, which again is business principles for the creator economy. For those of you who are not familiar with what the creator economy is, these are people who are looking to get into business via creating content online. So this can be a TikToker, Instagrammer, YouTuber. Uh, I guess you could call podcasters can be in that category, even though most of the podcasters who I know, and I know a whole lot of them, tend to take a little bit different route when, what, when they're doing these things. But generally, uh, these are people who are creating content online. YouTube is another one, very big one, where people are creating their content and they want to base their business around being a strong presence on a particular platform. And they want their business to be based on that foundation. So I'm recording this for those who are either in that economy or those who see themselves as uh, moving into that economy and you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to own a business and you don't want to be just a creator, all right? Because I don't want any of you, as a matter of fact, even if you weren't thinking along these lines, once you just heard me say that, I don't want any of you to pigeonhole yourself into just being a creator. And when I say that, what I mean is I do not want you to just focus on, I'm going to get really big on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or fill in the blank, whatever app is out there and say, that's just going to be how I do my business. I'm just get big there and I'm just become a, a well-known person with a million followers on that platform. And I'm just do all my business like that. And I'll just live happily ever after. I strongly suggest that you reconsider not not doing it at all, but consider a different end game to your business. Meaning you want to be a business owner and entrepreneur, not just a creator. Okay? And there is a difference between the two. So if you see yourself being a creator, meaning you're going to get a bunch of uh, followers and likes and commentary on any social app, doesn't matter which one it is. And then collect your ad revenue and maybe do some brand deals. All right. This is not specifically, this is not the angle that I would suggest you take. And I'm really not even making this episode for people who are thinking along those lines. And I know that there are a lot of people, especially people who are not even full grown adults yet. So let's say you're between the ages of 13 and 22. You might be thinking this right now. And that's what you want to do because you see everybody doing it. It's very popular. You're on your phone all the time. So you might think this is the way that you want to go. I'm really talking to the people who want to make this into a business, not just be a known entity on the internet. Because again, those are not the same thing. So I want everyone to listen to this. If you are a creator or if you're a parent and you have a child who is looking to be a creator, you should listen to this as well. And you can vet everything I'm going to say. And if it makes sense, then you can go listen to it a second time with your child so that they understand the things that I'm about to explain right here. So I want to be clear who I'm targeting with this, who I'm really making this for. So you understand where I'm coming from with the points that I'm sharing. And again, I want you to see my other episodes where I've talked about the creator economy. I talked about this in episode number 1862. If you want to be a creator or an influencer, listen to this now. I laid it out exactly <clears throat> what you need to understand about this game because it is not everything that it appears to be on the surface. And there's a reason why it appears one way, but it's actually another way. In episode number, there was another episode where I talked about this. I'll have to find what I titled it. But uh, that episode alone will at least get you going in the right direction. Again, episode 1862, if you want to be a creator or an influencer, 
listen to the episode so you understand how this game actually works. And then the other one that I want to give you is episode 1690, a dirty secret that social media platforms don't want you to know. All of you need to understand what I explained in episode 1690 because it lays out the game of social media. For any of you who thinks that social media is free, it is not free. Even if you're not publishing, if you're just scrolling and looking at stuff on social media, social media is not free. So any of you who thinks it's free, listen to episode 1690 so you understand what you're actually paying to use these apps. Point number one, topic once again today is business principles for working in the creator economy. Number one, most important, always keep this in mind. I don't care what business you get into. This is always a principle. Do not build your house on sand. So yes, if you own a house on the beach, sell it and move somewhere else. All right, um, now I'm, that's tongue in cheek, I'm joking. But do not build your house on sand. When you run a business, do not build your house on sand. What does that mean? A house that can be easily washed away from a big wave coming in from the ocean is the literal explanation of a house on sand because sand shifts under your feet very easily. And if you've been to the beach before, you're standing on the sand, the wave comes in, you notice how the sand kind of erodes from under your feet while you're standing there because the water just pulled it out from under you. Okay, that's the same thing that happens to a house that's built on sand. And in the creator economy, a house on sand means you are doing all of your business via some platform on which you are publishing your content. And they, because of that, because you're doing all of your business through that platform, you don't own your business. They own you. So if you're pub publishing all your content on YouTube and all your stuff is on YouTube and that's how people are finding you and you don't have a way to get them off of YouTube and into something that you have control over and everything starts and stops at YouTube, YouTube owns you. Now I'm saying this and I'm recording this video and it's going to go on YouTube. YouTube's not going to let this one get seen too much. If they, their AI bots go through everything that I'm saying, which I'm sure it does, but I still have to make sure that it gets said. I told you one of the reasons that I am in the position that I am and I do what I do because I have certain things that I need to say that I can't not say, regardless of the, the consequence of saying something like that. I'm still going to say it and still put it on YouTube anyway. Or you can swap out YouTube and put Instagram, put Twitter, put TikTok, put Facebook, put whatever app you are doing all your stuff on. If all of your business is starting there and ending there, you are living in a house that is built on sand and you are one strong wave away from being washed into the ocean. And if you can't swim, you're in trouble. Especially if you have a house falling down on top of you while you can't swim. That's even worse. That is a house built on sand. So everybody understand what I mean by this? You don't want the social platform that you're publishing on to own your entire business and own your access to your audience. And by the way, your business is your access to your audience, in case any of you didn't know. Your access to your audience is the business, because as long as you can talk to the people in your audience directly without having to go through other people, or even if you did have to go through other people, as long as you can talk to them, you have an opportunity to do business because you can tell them what you have and you can offer them something they can buy. It, right? That gives you an opportunity to do business, even if you needed to go through TikTok or Instagram to do it. But... If the only way you can access your audience is by going through TikTok or Instagram or YouTube or Facebook, well, they own your business because they could easily block your access to, quote unquote, your audience because it's not yours. The audience is not yours because if they were to kick you off the app, you would have no access to the people who are following you, which is proof that they're not they were never yours in the first place. Because if they're yours, then you have complete control over how to access them. Since you don't, they're not yours. So any of you who has a bunch of followers on any social app. That's cool. Congratulations that you had those followers. Understand that they own you because that app could easily just delete your account. You could get hacked. They could just decide to block you. They could shut down their app. The government could shut them down. And now you can't access that 50,000 or 100,000 or 10 million people who are following you, which means you have no way of doing business because the people who like you the most don't have a way of reaching you. And you don't have a way of reaching them. That's a house on sand. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? So they can wipe you out with a click of a button. So if all of your access to your audience can be taken away by an app, again, your, that wave can pull you out of there. Right, that, that house of cards you're living in can be knocked over very easily. So there's nothing wrong with using these platforms. Right, I use these platforms judiciously, and I would bet 99% of you listen to this. I publish on all of these applications more than you do. So I'm not knocking the existence of the platforms themselves. But you need to be using them rather than having them use you. Again, listen to episode 1690 so you understand what I mean by having them use you. And by the way, they are all using all of us every day, even me. All of us are being used by the social media apps. And again, if you think they're free, you need to think again. So if all your material, all your access, and all your revenue is tied to your use of a social platform, then they own you. They're using you. And this is true even if you're making a lot of money. All right? You're making $10,000 a month from using a social app and because you're uh, doing dances or you got a popular content 
platform on uh, YouTube or you got a bunch of followers on Instagram or wherever else, they are still using you and they're using you more than you're using them. OK, so just because you're making money doesn't mean you're not being used. All right, you can be making a whole lot of money and still be being used. All right, any of you ever been in that situation? If you haven't asked around, you'll find someone who can tell you exactly what it looked like and what it sounds like. So whatever you consider to be a lot, a lot does not undo the fact that you're being used. So if they can take it away, in essence, take you out of the game, they're using you. Any, again, if your access to people is only through that, then you're in trouble. And I want you to get out of trouble as quickly as possible. Moving on to point number two. Today's topic, once again, is business principles for those who want to work in the creator economy. Number two, every business must have and own a list. So this is how you get out of what I just told you on point number one. Make sure you're not living in a house on sand, but you still want to use TikTok. Here's what you do to make sure you don't get used by TikTok is you must have a list. What is a list? A list is the direct contact information of people who want to hear from you and have given you direct permission to contact them with your offers, your stories, your information, your articles, your videos, whatever it is that you want to tell them about. And you can do so without having to use the third party of a social media application. All right, that is a list. So if you don't have a list, you need to get a list. Okay, and I talked about lists in episode number. Let me see if I can find the episode where I talked about a list. That was episode number. Still finding it. I'm not finding it right now. But anyway, I've talked about a list many times, but I'm going to tell you the what a list is. I just told you. A list is people who have, and I might have done an article on it, but not an episode on it. So maybe that's why I'm not finding it. A list is a direct contact information. So direct contact information means email address, phone number, physical address. As long as you have an email address, phone number, physical address of a person, you can contact them directly without having to go through an app. See, if I have your email, I can just email you. I don't have to get on Instagram and talk to you. If I have your phone number, I can call you or text you. If I have your physical address, I can send you something in the mail or I can even show up at your front door. But if I only have, if I only have access to you through your screen name on a social platform, then I have to go through the social platform to contact you. And if anything happens to your account or my account on that platform, now I can no longer contact you again. I just lost a great, maybe someone who would have been a great uh, friend, contact, client, customer, member, et cetera, because I didn't secure my uh, ability to contact you directly. So this means your ability to contact someone directly, which does not require a third party social media application. If you must log on to YouTube or Instagram to access your audience, you don't have an audience and you don't have a list. Technically, you do have an audience, but it's not really yours. You have a borrowed audience. The problem with a borrowed audience, the problem with anything you borrow from another person is that eventually they want it back. They got to take it back from you. So you don't want to borrow it. You want to own it. That's why I said this is what point number two is. You must have an own a list, not borrow a list, own a list. If you need to log on to YouTube or Instagram to access your audience, you don't own a list. Okay. Your social media followers are not, I repeat, not N O T. Your social media followers are not part of your list. I sometimes hear people saying this. They say, well, how big is your list? And they say, well, add up all your social media followers. That's your list. Bullshit. That is not your list. Next time you hear somebody say that, whoever that is, stop listening to that person because they are lying to you. They don't know, or they're either lying to you because they know what they know that that's some bullshit, or they don't know what they're talking about and they believe they're telling you the truth. Either way, stop listening to them. Your social media followers are not your list. Your list of people who you can contact directly through a direct form of contact: email address, phone number, physical address. I can reach anyone listening to this right now if I have one of these three pieces of information about you. I don't need to log on to any app to do it. If I have your email, or I have your phone number, or I have your physical address, as long as it's accurate, I can contact you directly. Doesn't mean you're going to respond, but I can contact you. Now, if all I have is you're following me on Instagram, I don't know your name, I don't know your email address, I don't have your phone number, I don't have your physical address. Well, the only way we can contact each other is through Instagram. And if I decide to stop using Instagram, then I'll never see you and you'll never see me. That's a problem for me if I'm running a business. So you need this direct uh, contact information, folks. And understand that when you sign up for these social media apps, notice that they get all this information from you. They might not ask you for your physical address, but they get your email address. And then they say, well, just to give this two-step verification to make sure your account is secure, give us, a phone, give us your phone number. Just in case there's ever a suspicious activity on your account, we're going to send you a text message and you can verify that it was you or verify that it wasn't you via a text message. So what are they collecting? Your email address and your phone number as soon as you sign up. Notice that all the apps do this. 
every single app you've signed up for knows your email address and they know your phone number. And then they verify that you gave them the right one by sending you a text message or an email to make sure they click on the link to verify your account. Notice that they do it all. Okay, that's a slick way of making sure that they have your contact information. This is the reason why these companies are worth the money that they're worth is because they have a list, not because of their technology. A lot of the technology you see in social media apps can easily be copied by someone who's an experienced coder. It ain't worth that much money, but the list is worth a whole lot of money. This is the reason why Facebook tried to buy Snapchat a few years ago for $3 billion. The reason they tried to buy Snapchat is not because they needed to learn how to do the technological stuff that Snapchat was doing, like the disappearing stories to go away after 24 hours. Notice that they went to their app. Facebook owns Instagram, by the way. They went to Instagram, copied exactly what Snapchat had, and then they made Instagram stories. Now, LinkedIn, you got LinkedIn stories. You got Twitter. I don't know if Twitter has stories. YouTube has stories. TikTok has stories. Everybody has stories. Everybody just copied the technology. Technology is easy to copy. Facebook did not offer Snapchat $3 billion because they need to learn how to make disappearing stories. They offer Snapchat $3 billion because Snapchat has a list of users that Facebook wanted access to. And Snapchat would not sell it to them. They turned down $3 billion because they saw the value of what they were doing was worth more than $3 billion. Personally, I would have took the money. But Snapchat decided not to. The point of me telling you that story is that Facebook looked at Snapchat's list, not the technology, the list, and said that list is worth $3 billion. We'll give you $3 billion to have it. That's the value of a list, ladies and gentlemen. And notice that just getting access to the people doesn't mean anything to Facebook. They don't make any money just because you have a list of people. What, is what happens? Facebook already has mechanisms in place to make money from having all those people, but they wanted the people. They were willing to pay $3 billion to access a list of people. Can you imagine it? That's the value of a list in a business, folks. That's why you need one. Okay? So if you have 500,000 followers on TikTok and you have an email list of 1,000 people, how big is your list? This is a, this is a quick pop quiz based on what I just told you. <clears throat> Let me tell you the numbers again. On TikTok, you have 500,000 followers and you have an email list with 1,000 people on it. How big is your list? Just with that information alone, how big is your list? Well, let me tell you what it's not. Your list is not 501,000 people because that 500,000 is not part of your list. They're on TikTok. That's not your list. Your list is 1,000 people. That's how big your list is. The number of people you have on your email list, that is your list. If you have some phone numbers, you can add them. You got some physical addresses, you can add them. Now, understand if you got the same information from the same person, that doesn't add an extra person. So let's say 1,000 people, I got their email address, and then I got 1,000 people's phone numbers, and I got 1,000 people's physical address, and my list is 3,000 because I have a direct way of contacting 3,000 different people. Now, if I got each, if I have 1,000 people and I got each one of their email address, phone number, and physical address, then that's just a list of 1,000 people. So it doesn't count more than once for the same person. You, ideally, you want to have as much information as possible about a person. By the way, social media apps, they got all the information they could ever want about you. They know everything you do, you know everything you like, and know who you're DMing, and they know what you're saying, know what posts you're looking at, they know where you're spending time, they know your email address, they know your phone number, they probably know everything else you're doing on your phone. You know that these phones are not private, right? Y'all know anything you do on a smartphone can become government data and information, right? Y'all know that, right? Okay, that's not news to anybody, is it? Okay, I hope y'all I hope that's not news to anyone. Right, they know everything you're doing on these phones. You take you use a smartphone, they know everything that you're doing. So be careful what you're doing on that phone because it can and will be used against you. So <clears throat> the people you can contact without logging on to TikTok, that's your list. Okay. A thousand people given my little scenario there. So it's very important that you understand this and listen to this over and over again until you get it. Because these days I see many people uh, counting their followers as part of their list. That is nonsense. Now, are they part of your reach? Yes. Your reach can be 500,000 people if you have 500,000 followers on TikTok, but that's not your list. These, this language matters. So if you have 500,000 followers, again, you can technically access 500,000 eyeballs. But the list are people who you can access directly and you don't need to log into anything to do so, at least other than your email, no server. So these are two different terms and these semantics do matter. Okay, so do not think that I'm just throwing different words around to sound smart. I'm smart without trying to sound smart. I'm telling you something that's actually true and you need to understand the language here because when you talk to someone else and they say, how big is your list? What they really want to know is your list, not how many followers you got on social media. That's not your list. And if anybody has that confused, then you can fill them in on what they don't know because I just told you, okay? So if TikTok disappeared tomorrow, how many people can you access? All right, given my scenario that I gave you, you can access 1,000 because the 500,000 you had on TikTok, I just told you TikTok disappeared. So that doesn't count anymore. All right, you see what I mean? And don't think that this can't happen. It can, it can happen and it will happen, by the way. Point number three, today's topic, once again, 
is business principles for those working in the creator economy. Number three, you must evolve into more than a mere creator. Do not stay a creator. Your host, me, I started out as a creator before they were calling it a creator. I didn't even know I was a creator, but I was, when I say creator, what I mean is I was just publishing content on the internet, building up an audience, building up popularity and name recognition. And all the money that I made online was made because I was creating this content. And I understood from a very early age, or not age, but er very early point in what I was doing, that I needed to evolve beyond doing just that because I didn't like the prospect of some application of which I couldn't really contact anybody there directly, having complete control over my access to what was becoming my audience. I didn't like that. That was a precarious position to be in. So I understood I needed to evolve and do a lot more than just create content. So if you're serious about being an entrepreneur, not just a creator, you can do so via being a creator. There's nothing wrong with being a creator and, and segueing into entrepreneurship, but understand that there is a difference between being a creator and being an entrepreneur. And I have lived through this difference. So you have to evolve beyond being a creator, posting content on social media platforms that you don't own. And this is a very important line that I just said there. You cannot just be a creator posting content on social media platforms that you do not own. So if you're giving your best stuff, you're giving really good stuff to a platform that you don't have control over, you don't own anything. They own you. Now, again, use your position as a creator. Nothing wrong with this. Use that position to bring people into things that you do have control over. So you listen to this show and I say, hey, go to work on your game university. What am I doing? I'm bringing you to something that I have control over, which is work with your game university. I don't control whatever application you're consuming me on. I probably don't have full 100% control over it. Now, I may have an account. I may pay to use it, but I don't have full control over it. If they just decide to kick me off for whatever reason, they can come up with a reason and there's not really much I can do about it. Okay. So I got started doing the same thing that I'm telling you all to do. I was a creator before we were even using that language creator. We weren't even calling it that. And over time, I evolved into bringing people deeper into my own worlds over which I had control rather than simply giving all of my value on platforms that were not mine. Because, again, I understood the precariousness of that position. You need to do the same thing because in today's world, with everyone consuming content, you have a lot of exposure that you can leverage into building a business. Or you have, you have the potential for a lot of exposure because everybody uses their phones. Everyone uses social media apps. So there's a whole bunch of people looking around who might be looking for what you have. So be a creator. But at the same time, you got to move those people off the apps and into something that is yours. So you got to think like a business owner. Don't think like a YouTuber or a TikToker or an Instagram, because those people get used up and thrown out like porn actresses because there's always a new creator coming around. The hot creator today may not be the hot creator five years from now, because there's going to be a whole new wave of creators who come in behind them. So what these apps do is they use you, the next wave comes in to take your place and you get completely forgotten by the audience. So don't allow yourself to get swallowed up by the game in this way, uh, no pun intended, and make sure that you are building your house on rock, not on sand. And I'll tell you how to do that as I recap our points here today. Once again, it's business principles for working in the creator economy. This is for those of you who want to be a business owner in the creator space. You don't want to just be a creator publishing content. Point number one, do not build your house on sand. Sand is any land that you do not have control over. If all your business is based on your access to a social media app, your house is on sand because you can lose that access at any time for many reasons. Number two, every business must have and own a list. What is a list? It is the direct contact information of a person that you can use without logging onto a social app to do so. That means an email address, a phone number, or a physical address. Those are the only direct ways to contact people outside of using social apps that we know of today. The more of those you have, the bigger your list. The more of a list you have, the more of a business you have. You have no list, you have no business. Number three, you must evolve into more than a mere creator. You want to become an entrepreneur. You want to become a business owner, which means you have to have some platforms and some access to platforms that you own and control, not using platforms that someone else owns and controls. Social media is not owned by you. Social media is owned by them. Whoever owns the social media apps, they could decide to kick you off, delete your account, uh, suppress your reach, anything, do anything they want to do to you anytime they feel like it. And if your entire business is based on using that app, well, they can just destroy your business in one second. Or why would you put your business in that position? And if you are a true business owner, you would never be in that position. So if you're a creator, I'm giving you this message here as a wake up call. With all that said, make sure you text me so you're in my community. My number is down below in the description. Also, work on your game, university.com. That's a place where you can work with me directly, have me as your direct coach. That is for anyone who is a high level, ambitious performer 
wants to perform at your highest level, do so consistently and produce more results. We have different ways you can work with us directly, but it's all laid out at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work on your game. Dre, all.